Hello, my name is Mrs Kershaw and I'm a Science Director with Outward Grange Academies Trust. Welcome to our lesson today on concentration and the rate of reaction. For this lesson, you will need a pen, a piece of paper and importantly, a calculator. So if you need to go get those things now, pause the video. Right, let's make a start. Have you wrote the date and the title? So our learning outcomes for today, our challenge will be to explain how concentration influences the rate of a reaction. And our aspire is going to be to calculate the rate of a reaction from data and graphs. Before we start today's lesson, let's see what you can remember. So here's a diagram showing a low concentration and a high concentration. Can you find the missing words in the sentence? 30 seconds, off you go. Great. Did you remember that at a higher concentration, there are more particles in the same volume? And this means that the particles collide more frequently. We are now going to watch a short video that will demonstrate how concentration influences the rate of a reaction. Great. 
As you can see from this reaction, a gas is produced. And in our last lesson, we measured the rate of reaction by measuring the decrease in mass. This lesson, we're going to do it slightly differently. Instead of measuring the decrease in mass, we're going to measure the volume of gas produced. And there are two ways in which we can do this. The first one, which I'm currently showing you, uses a gas syringe. So the reaction between the hydrochloric acid and the magnesium happens in the conical flask. The gas is produced and that travels up the glass tube and into the gas syringe, which then records the volume of gas produced. This is quite an accurate method of doing it and you may see this in class. However, not all schools have enough gas syringes and they can be quite fiddly. So in a lot of cases, what you will see is this setup that I'm going to show you next. So here we have the conical flask again, just like on the previous one, and we could put in our magnesium and our hydrochloric acid. And this time the bubbles travel up the glass tube, but then they go into a measuring cylinder that has been submerged in water. As the gas goes up the measuring cylinder, it displaces the water and again we can measure the volume of gas produced. Just showing you those methods side by side then. So the one on the left has the gas syringe and the one on the right in this case has a gas jar but if we wanted to record a volume accurately we would use a measuring cylinder. This is one of the required practicals for AQA combined science and AQA chemistry. We are now going to watch a short video of the practical being carried out. Hi there, it's Mr Mitchell here from Malmesbury Science and today we'll be looking at the second of two videos measuring a rate of a chemical reaction. I'm going to show you two methods to measure the rate of a chemical reaction today. Firstly, using a measuring cylinder and secondly, a gas syringe. For the reaction today, I'm going to be using magnesium and hydrochloric acid. I'm going to be comparing two different concentrations of hydrochloric acid. We're going to be looking at two moles per decimeter cubed against one mole per decimeter cubed. Two mole per decimeter cubed means for every decimeter cubed of water I have, every liter of water, I am dissolving two moles of hydrochloric acid in the solution. I'm going to start by measuring 50 centimeters cubed of two mole per decimeter cubed hydrochloric acid in a measuring cylinder. I'm going to pour the first 45, making sure I read at eye level to see the bottom of the meniscus. As I get close, I'm going to use a pipette to add the final few drops. I'm going to pour the hydrochloric acid into a conical flask with a bung and delivery tube. The first method I'm going to show you is a measuring cylinder filled with water and inverted that the gas will displace as it's produced. Push the measuring cylinder into the trough and then slowly lower the top of the measuring cylinder down to fill it with water. This will eliminate the risk of getting any air bubbles in the measuring cylinder. You then need to clamp the measuring cylinder in place about one centimetre off the bottom of the trough. Make sure that you can see the scale on the measuring cylinder because you're going to need to record the gas being produced every 10 seconds. Put the delivery tube into the bottom of the measuring cylinder, like so. You're going to add the magnesium to the conical flask and as you do this, your partner's going to start the stop clock. At the same time, you're going to have to put the bung immediately onto the top of the conical flask, making sure there's no room for the gas to escape. As the gas is produced, water is forced out of the measuring cylinder and you need to count how much gas has been produced every 10 seconds and record it in your results table. This time I'm using the one molar hydrochloric acid to see if the reaction is a little bit slower. I'm going to once again pour the hydrochloric acid into the conical flask. And as you add the magnesium, insert the bung and start the timer at the same time. Once again, we're measuring the gas produced every 10 seconds.
An alternative method is to use a gas syringe. We're still using a conical flask, bung and delivery tube with the hydrochloric acid and magnesium. However, you're measuring how much gas fills up the gas syringe. Once again, measuring the amount of gas produced every 10 seconds. The gas syringe needs to be kept dry at all times. Otherwise, there's a risk of the plunger getting stuck and you won't be able to get any results. Now you've collected results of different concentrations, you're going to draw a graph of your results. On your graph... If we look at that practical in a little bit more detail then, we can see that we're going to add magnesium ribbon to hydrochloric acid. Using a gas syringe and a stop clock, we would then time the reaction and record the volume of gas produced, ideally every 10 seconds. Here are a set of results using two different concentrations of hydrochloric acid. On the left hand side we have one molar hydrochloric acid and on the right hand side we have two molar hydrochloric acid. The volume of gas was recorded every minute. First thing to note is that both of the reactions produced 48 centimetres cubed of gas. So despite the concentration changing, the reaction volumes remain the same. The difference, however, is the two molar acid, which is twice the concentration of the one molar, produced the 48 centimetres cubed in four minutes whereas the one molar hydrochloric acid required eight minutes to produce the same volume of gas. So this is a much slower reaction. We can display these on a graph. If we look at the red line, this is much steeper than the blue line. As the gradient is much higher, this means that this is a much faster reaction. But whenever answering questions about these types of reaction, we must always note that they both finished at 48 centimetres cubed. So they both finish at the same amount, but the first one, the red one, is steeper, so the reaction is faster. Right. Here we have a question that asks you to describe and explain. So if we bug this question, our first command word is describe. So in a describe question, we should be saying what's on the graph? What do we see? The second part of the question is an explain. So in this question, we are going to need to explain what has happened. A good connective to use for explain questions is the connective because. If we underline the keywords, particles and collisions are keywords in this question. And then if we go back over and glance over the question, we need to be talking about the concentration and the rate of the reaction. Five minutes, have a go at answering this question.
let's see how we got on. Grab your red pen and if you need to make any improvements, do so as we go along. First of all, we should have said that as the concentration increases, the reaction rate also increases. We then needed to say that we could see this because at two molar, the gradient is steeper than that at one molar. The third point was that both reactions produce 48 centimetres cubed of gas. You could have expanded that answer and you could have said that the two molar hydrochloric acid reached 48 centimetres cubed of gas after four minutes, whilst the one molar reached 48 centimetres cubed of gas after eight minutes. We then needed to say that this is because the two molar hydrochloric acid has more particles per unit volume. And this therefore means that there is an increase in the frequency of the collisions. Well done, give yourself a mark out of five. So far in this series of lessons, we've looked at how graphs can tell us about the rate of reaction. But you will also need to be able to calculate the rate of reaction. In this video, I'm going to remind you how to calculate a mean and a couple of the pitfalls to avoid when answering these questions in a science exam. So first of all, looking at this question, the table shows the student's results from the experiment with hydrochloric acid at a low concentration. The question asks you to calculate the mean value of x. Now, one thing to remember is we've got our time here and our volume of gas across there, and this is doing it one, two, three, four times, and then counting the mean of those four times. So we're reading across the table. That's the first thing to remember. Secondly, after the question asks you to calculate the mean value of x, so we're looking at this, column, this row here, it says do not include any anomalous results. That's important. They often put these in in science exams just to try and catch you out a little bit. And then the other thing to note is that they want their answer to two significant figures. Okay, They're all important things. Often I will write underneath here two significant figures just to remind me that when I'm doing writing down my answer that I need that to be into two significant figures. So going back to the do not include any anomalous results when I look across the row for 40 seconds I can see I've got 46, 30, 47 and 49. Now three of those are in the 40s and are quite close and this one stands out as being really quite different. So I would say that that is my anomalous result and I'm not going to include that when I calculate my mean. So my mean will be the three results I am using. So we add those all together, 46 plus 47 plus 49. And I've added three things together so to get the mean, I am then going to divide by 3. Now remember, this is a science exam. We always use our calculator. There are no extra marks for mental maths. So if I add 46 plus 47 plus 49, and then I press equals, divide that by 3, and I get an answer, and if your calculator is like this and it gives you it as a fraction, remember the examiners will not accept fractions in science exams, so we need to press the SD button and get a number. So I've got a number of 47.3. Now this is why I reminded myself here that it needs to be to two significant figures. So I take the first two figures 
and then I look at the third. Is the third figure greater or equal to five? It isn't in this case, so therefore we ignore it in our significant figures. And our two significant figures would be four and seven. And the answer would be 47 centimetres cubed. Let's check if you got that. Here's a question taken from an exam paper where you need to calculate the value of x. If you're not sure, rewind the video and watch the demonstration again. One minute, see if you can find the value of x. How did you get on then? So did you get the answer of 42? If you didn't then I suspect you missed the anomalous result. 78 does not fit the pattern. 41 and 43 are very very similar. 78 very much different and we don't include that in our mean. So our mean calculation should have been 41 plus 43 divided by 2 which is 42. Now we can calculate the mean, let's have a look at how we can now use that to calculate a rate. There are a number of ways in which we can calculate the rate of reaction. This first way is quite straightforward and is just a simple calculation. You can see that it's only worth one mark, so the exam board are not going to be asking you to do too much to get that one mark. This question says the reaction produces 1.6 grams of gas in 30 seconds. Calculate the mean rate of reaction in the first 30 seconds. It gives you the calculation. So, we have mass of product and we measure mass in grams. So we'd have 1.6 grams on the top. Underneath it says time in seconds and the time in seconds was 30 seconds. So if we again use our calculator to do that calculation we would end up with an answer of 0 0.053. Now they may ask you to work out what the units are and in just the same way that we have divided 1.6 by 30 we would also divide the grams by seconds so the units would be grams per second that's just another way of writing grams divided by seconds so our answer to this question would be 0.5 three grams per second. Let's see if we understood that then. Again, if you're not sure, rewind the video and watch the previous bit again. So this time we would like to calculate the mean rate of reaction from zero to 15 seconds. I'd also this time like you to calculate the unit. One minute.
did we get on then? Did you get that the volume of gas in centimetres cubed was 30 centimetres cubed and the time in seconds was 15? So if we divide 30 by 15, we get an answer of 2 and our units in this occasion are centimetres cubed per second. If you've got the units, give yourself a bonus mark. So far, we've looked at just calculating the rate of reaction. Sometimes you will need to use a graph to be able to do this. Here's an example. In this type of question, the examiner has increased the complexity of the question. This time, the numbers are not given to you in the question, but you need to read them from the graph. So, the question says calculate the mean rate of reaction between 0 and 50 seconds. So the first thing we need to do is we need to find 50 seconds on our graph and it goes up in 20 so we're going to be halfway between 40 and 50. So I'm going to draw a dotted line There you go, that's 50. And we then, once we've hit the curve, we need to then go across to the y-axis and take the reading from the y-axis. In this case, it's just below the 80. Read the scale here. Each of the small squares is worth two marks. And, sorry, two centimetres cubed and between the 78 and the 80 is where the line falls so that would be 79 so we now have our two values so the mean volume of gas collected was 79 centimetres cubed and the time at which that was taken was 50 seconds and if I then put that into my calculator I get an answer of 1.58 just checking it said nothing about significant figures or decimal places so I am okay to just put one point five eight onto my answer line and in this question it's already given me the units so I don't need to add the units. Right this time you're going to have a go at calculating the rate of reaction from a graph. I would like you to calculate the mean rate of reaction between 0 and 20 seconds. Two minutes off you go.
on then. <coughs> Let's have a look at the answers. So, if we look at y, y goes from 0 to 45. x goes from 0 to 20. So if you put those into the equation, we end up with 45 centimetres cubed divided by 20 seconds. That gives us a rate of reaction of 2.25 centimetres cubed per second. And again, if you remember the units, give yourself a bonus mark. On the previous example, we calculated the mean rate of reaction over a given period of time. For those students who are studying the higher tier qualifications, you may be asked to calculate the rate of reaction at an exact point on the graph. And we do this by taking a tangent to the curve and working out the gradient. Here is a video explaining how we might work out the tangent to a curve. The final way in which we can calculate the rate of reaction is a little bit more complicated and it's only asked on higher tier papers. This time it will involve drawing a tangent to the curve and it would give us the rate of a reaction at a specific point. So, this question asks us to determine the rate of reaction at 50 degrees centigrade when the loss of mass is 0.95 grams. This whole curve relates to 50 degrees centigrade. So if I then find 0.95 on my y-axis and I take that along, I can see that this is the exact point at which they are wanting us to work out the rate of reaction. And the way that I then do this is that I draw a tangent to the curve, so I want a line, and you know, it's fine to move your paper, I want a line that's just touching. It's always a good idea to try and make your tangent as big as possible, but also remembering to make it as easy to read the values from the axes. So I'm going to take this point here and I'm take it from this point here. Right, so now I have got my triangle. I can find my increase in Y which is going to go from here to here. So my increase in Y goes from 0 0.76 to 1.8. And then my change in x is going to go from here, which is 25, to here, which is 120. So if I'm working out the gradient of my tangent, I now need to have my gradient equals change in y divided by change in x. 
if I read the values that I'd highlighted on my graph, my change in y is 108 minus 0.76, and that is going from there to there. And my change in x is 120 minus 25. And this relates to going from there to there. If I then work that out, again using a calculator, no marks for mental maths on science exams. I get 0 0.32 divided by 95. And that gives me an answer of 0 0.00336. Now, to remember, in the question, it's said to give our answer to two significant figures. So this time, these noughts here, we ignore those because they're not our first significant figures. We've then got a 3 and a 3. So I write my first one down. That's my first significant figure. And then my second significant figure, I look at the value to the right of it. Is it greater or equal to 5? In this case it is. So I increase that to 4. So my answer to two significant figures is 0 0.0034. And that concludes today's lesson. If you are a higher tier student and would like to try one of the questions with a tangent to the curve, there is one of these on the Google document that accompanies this lesson. Everybody else, go to your Google form now and answer the questions and don't forget to submit them to your teacher. The following slides will summarise today's lesson if you would like to make some more detailed notes in your book. Just stop the video, write what you need to write and then move on. Bye.